Well, I've been requested to watch this, and I really don't want to watch this because I already know what they're doing. I read the agenda. I looked at all of the resolutions. I looked at all the pork coming out. Uh, I already know what it is. And this is just a puppet show. And, uh, you know, it's very aggravating to have to watch these people enabling what I consider to be a crime syndicate operate. And I do believe that it is a crime syndicate. Even people, oh, that's just hell. He's fucking so negative. Well, let me tell you something. When you cut your service to the point where it's barely usable and at the same time, hundreds of millions of dollars are handed out for all kinds of things that aren't of any use at all. $33 million for offices for the the TriMet Parasite class, who who knows what they're doing, but they're not necessary. $100 million for a better red, which is the biggest joke. It's actually $200 million. Complete joke, has no purpose whatsoever. Uh, the PAL redesign, $150 million. I mean, the money is just outrageous. So I don't really want to watch this because it speaks, makes me sick. It literally makes me sick. It's like, it's just like watching the politicians talk, you know. They talk lies, they lie, they just get up there and lie, and people actually believe it. It just shocks me. And the same thing with this. Oh, and I'm watching the, uh, you know, I listen to the scanner, I listen to all the uh, mayhem over there, where they have thousands of people banned from riding their system, and then they wonder why they get assaulted every day, and why all their shelters are smashed. Well, but all the public is just out of control. Well, you leave people behind, you are creating an act of violence, that act of violence comes back on you. So they don't, they don't even, they're so ignorant over there. They don't even see their own role in creating all the violence. They, they, they put it all over on the citizens, just like the mainstream media will, will put, put out a story. Look at these fair beaters. They're drug users and fair evaders. And we must do something. It's, it's like a attempt to influence, influence the minds of the moron citizens who can't think beyond what they're being told. And they end up going, yeah, we got to lock everybody up, even though we're already the largest penal colony in the world. Nobody can connect the dots. So I'm really trying to isolate myself from all of this. Now we have Russia. It's like, come, give me a fucking break, man. I don't want to hear about it. Okay. I don't want, I don't care about Ukraine. I don't care about Russia. I don't care about any of this. All I know is that this is the best thing that ever happened to the military industrial complex since the end of Iraq. Well, how about that? They don't have Iraq, but now they have Russia. Woo, must be must be sheer coincidence. Yeah, com just coincidence that that would happen right after the other one. Yep, just coincidence. Just like, oh, COVID-19 is over, everybody. We've raked in billions of dollars for our drug parasite class. Hundred billion trillion dollars. And now COVID's over. Omicron will spread and everybody... You know, it's just one con game after another. And that's what this is here. This is just another one of those. You have a parasite class of, of people who are all getting well paid to funnel that money through while the society is rotting on the vine. And nobody can connect the dots because everybody's brains have been uh, so propagandized they can't see through anything anymore. So I really wasn't going to watch this, but... Somebody requested it, so I will watch it at least in little pieces at a time. I'm not going to watch this. I'll watch one little segment at a time like last time. As well as the board members to the February 23rd, 2022 board meeting. As always, we start with the public forum. And for our viewers who aren't familiar with this, the public forum provides an opportunity for the community to share thoughts. Wait a minute. Hold it. What's this? Is this a Russian up here? Yaroslav? Matuk, what is this guy doing there? That's a fucking Russian. Holy shit. Throw him out of the country. Concerns or feedback about TriMet or its services. <laughs> if you wish to provide comment, you only need to sign up and virtually raise your hand. And when it's your turn, you'll be called on. We will now go through a list of people who signed up by virtually raising their hand, and we ask those who do speak to limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, so let's begin. Kim, 
Who is, is our, our first speaker? speaker? Good morning, President Simmons and members of the board. Uh, right now, I do not see any individuals with their hands raised. <laughs> All right. <laughs> No public comments. Nobody wants to waste their time. You know, I think anybody that's followed this long enough knows you're just, you're wasting your time talking to them. It's just a complete waste of your time. They don't care what you think. They've already made all their decisions. They're the crime syndicate. You're, you're the guy that funds it, but you don't have any say in it. So nobody wants to waste their time. Well, well, we, we will, will proceed, proceed then uh, with board, board report. I mean, that's that should tell them something right there. That should tell the board. Of course, it doesn't because they're they're crime syndicate enabled. That should tell them of something right there that nobody nobody out of one point five million people in that district wants to say anything. I mean, it don't doesn't that tell you something? Yeah, it tells me that you're operating in complete secrecy, and nobody knows what's going on. And I know you do that intentionally. I know you guys do that intentionally because you don't put it on your Facebook and you don't put it on your Twitter. You put it, you put it on your, well, my account with 200 followers, TriMet News or something. And I'll close, close the public, public forum. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd like, like to, to first invite, invite Director Edwards to provide an update from the latest meeting of the Committee on Accessible Transportation. <laughs> Director Edwards? Yeah, let's hear this nonsense. President Simmons, uh, I do not see Director Edwards in the meeting, so our tech team is reaching out to him to help. Okay, very good. We will move on. They can't. Eat. They're at home and they can't even do it. You're not even. You don't even have to go anywhere to do this. Then uh, to the next board report, and so I'm going to invite um, Vice President Irish Bauman as. What do you mean Irish? Bauman? Her name is Lori Bauman. Why do you keep saying Irish Bauman? Her name is Lori Irish slash Bauman. Why do you keep saying Irish Bauman? See, even I know the correct, her correct name. See, see here, look, see, look, it says Lori Bauman. It doesn't say Irish Bauman, it says Lori Bauman. To provide an update on the most recent finance and audit committee report. Director Bauman? Yes, good, good morning, morning everyone. everyone. Can you all hear me? Great. And why wasn't she the president? Because she was the vice president while Warren was in charge. And why did they just... Who is the vice president now of this board? Is it still her? All right. Uh, the Finance and Audit Committee just met this morning, 8 o'clock this morning. And, and uh, I'm going to read from my notes. So I uh, apologize for looking away from the screen while I, while I talk to you. Um, so there were two items on the agenda this morning. One was uh, to uh, review the changes to the investment policy that um, the board's going to consider today, and also to talk about the, the status of the investment portfolio. Kara Fitzpatrick, talk to us about uh, the status of the investment portfolio. In the investment portfolio. They have so much money, they have an investment portfolio. But they can't give you guys a raise. They'll give you a little $2,500 Trump change if you sign up and work for them at 21 an hour. But no, nope, we're not going to raise your salary. No, do, do, do. We're not going to really value you by raising up your salary by, you know, a significant amount of money, like from 30 to 35 an hour. I think it should be from... 30 to 40 an hour. I think you should start at 30 and top at 40. Nope. Nope. We have an investment portfolio instead. It has, it has grown considerably. Uh, yeah, look. Over, as of December 31st of 21, over a year before. Uh, and that's. Yeah, the stock market, they print that fucking fake money. And where does it go? Right into the stock market. The, the scam is systemic. The elites own it all. And we out here, we're hanging on for dear life. Because of uh, two matters, primarily the issuance of bonds in October of 2021 and then federal COVID-related funds, the investment portfolio, as of the end of last year, was $912 million. Did you hear that? They have $912 million sitting around. They have $912 million sitting around in an investment portfolio. That's almost a billion dollars, folks. 
Oh, we don't have any money. We don't have any money. We can't get those new bus barriers. We're testing them. We're testing. We're getting feedback. You stupid assholes. You know these bus barriers don't work. You know those ones do. Why won't you put them in? Because you're criminals. And you don't want to do it because you don't want to take your investment portfolio and it protect your operators. Uh, that they, uh, to the extent those uh, funds are restricted funds, they are restricted because they are held for capital projects. <laughs> of course, they're held for capital projects. Uh, of course, the elites have this. What they, what's the old saying? The guy from France, you know. When, when corruption becomes a way of life, it becomes codified. So, I mean, the elites have this all set up so the corruption is, is now codified into law. You can't spend this money except for capital projects. And we all know how capital projects is how the elites steal the money. It's by capital. What do you think? Trump's border wall was even the same thing. Build the wall. That's a capital project. He didn't care about the money. You don't think, think he cared about any of that? Only the idiots believe that guy. He just wanted some capital projects money for it. He's a builder, that guy. I'm sure he would have put his own companies in there. That never... And Mexico will pay for it, remember? And debt service primarily. Uh, the portfolio is a mix of very conservative and safe investments uh, in assets like U.S. Treasuries. Um, the, they, they showed us, uh, or Kara showed us, that the interest rates... Um, it dropped considerably during the pandemic, and that means that the earnings on the investments are quite low. The effective interest rate of return as of December 31st was just 0.35%. Yeah, but at least the money is not going up and down, you see. The treasury notes, yeah, you can't really make any money on them, but you're not going to lose any money on them either. Okay, so that's the point with, with treasury notes. It's like buying gold. It's not going to go up or down very much. It will fluctuate a little bit, but it will always have pretty much the same exact value. The market keeps going up, and at some point in the history, probably not too far distant, that's going to the reckoning will come. Who knows when? As long as long as they can keep the illusion going, it will keep going, and everybody's everybody seems to be buying into the illusion. So. Yes. Uh, we then review the changes to the investment policy, and the board's going to be hearing more about that later in this meeting. They are some changes that um, expand some of the ability to invest in commercial paper um, and give some uh, flexibility around investment and maturity. The policies are still quite conservative, but the hope is that this will um, improve some of the... Uh, what are they doing uh, acting like a brokerage anyway? I mean, what do you mean they're just sitting on a whole bunch of money here? All right? They fight you tooth and nail for a work comp claim. Meanwhile, they're just sitting on a billion dollars. Returns on the uh, agency's investment portfolio. And the last item on the agenda was a review of the streetcar IGA, and that's an agreement between TriMet and the city relating to operating of the Portland streetcar. And this will be uh, coming before the board next month. I, I will suffice it to say it is a complex contract, but the purpose of it is to uh, keep the streetcar running as it's a, a valuable uh, asset uh, to the city and, and try to as well. It's goddamn you can walk faster than the streetcar. It's, and, it, and Fred Hansen was totally against the streetcar, by the way. The city wanted that because it was a development tool. Wow. And that is the end of my report. I'm happy to answer questions. Decent report. Are there any questions for a Director Bauman? Seeing none, I want to thank you, Director Bauman. And um, I see that Director Edwards is now with us. Um, Director Edwards, are you able to provide us with an update on the latest meeting on the Committee on Accessible Transportation? No, I am not. <laughs> I had a, um, I took a mini vacation last week, oh, and I haven't received my uh, the transcripted um, agenda or the transcripted minutes yet. And when I received those, I would submit a report, and I would get it to. Why did you say you didn't go? You weren't there, okay? I Ed, Edwards did not go and list or sign into the meeting. We don't need you. They can just put the minutes up anywhere. 
you couldn't turn on your computer. I'm sure they're doing it just like this. You just turn on your computer from wherever you are and participate. Kimberly, so that you can share it with the rest of the board. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so now we're going to go on um, to a Director Kim for uh, a report on the, the Metro Policy Advisory Committee. Director yes. Kim? Yep. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, last meeting was January 26 um, for the MPAC, and Metro staff provided an overview of the role of, of the MPAC and the topics for the, for the year, for especially for the new members. And as you may, uh, you can imagine, there are new members from different regions as they were recently uh, currently elect, elected and, and started their new roles. So, so the, the main, main discussion, discussion item was on the I-205 tolling project. <laughs> and Squeeze those surfs. Squeeze them every which way you can. Now they're going to toll you. It's not bad enough that the inflation is killing you, you know. But now they're going to toll you to use their fucking roads. I mean, these people are going to kill us, okay? You're going to be killed by these people. You're, you're like a frog in slowly boiling water. And uh, some, some discussion, discussion on the 2023 regional um, that tra transportation plan update, update that was scheduled was uh, actually postponed because the tolling project discussion ran quite long. And for the I-205 tolling discussion, ODOT reviewed the need for a proposed regional transportation plan. ODOT, the most corrupted agency in Portland, by the way, makes TriMet look like kindergarten. ODOT is the worst corrupt in Oregon. Just, just want to put that out there. And then to align the environmental analysis for the tolling project with the um, with the construction, and um, the represent various uh, representatives from many regions expressed their dismay regarding overall communication method um, and the, the process, um, but that discussion is to be continued. Um, and in connection with this I-205 tolling discussion, I understand our TriMet staff is, is also working with ODOT to identify transit improvements to mitigate the impact of tolling, how those projects will be funded and... More capital fucking projects, but you can't run your bus service. As far as I'm concerned, TriMet is got, is nothing. It's, they're they're nothing but a horrible tax sucking agency. As long as they don't have their bus service set up properly, they're nothing. The rest of it is pork to the elites. This is a, a criminal organization here funneling tax money upwards. How a future tolling program could integrate with TriMet's low income fare program. What the fuck does tolling have to do with low income fares? Um, with, with respect, respect to uh, this month's meeting, meeting which, which will happen, happen tonight, tonight uh, we'll, we'll be discussing uh, values, uh, values and outcomes for the 23 regional, regional transportation, transportation plan, plan, as well as uh, the emerging, emerging transportation, transportation trends. trends. <laughs> um, and and uh, uh, lastly, also, also the food scraps requirements policy. policy. What? So, that's, that's all. all. What do you say? The food scraps? What? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Dr. Dr. Kim. Kim. And, and does, does anyone, anyone have, have any questions, questions or comments? comments? Seeing none, then we're going to move on for an update from um, Director Lewis on the Reimagining Public Safety Committee. Oh, uh, yeah. This farce. Director Lewis? Uh, this is quite the farce, isn't it? I mean, it's not safe there for anybody. TriMet policies are creating a... Uh, a disaster for themselves. Every person they leave behind in the ditch is one more person that hates them. And it's just self-fulfilling disaster they have here. And they don't have, the cops don't respond anymore. And the bus drivers have no mental health training at all. And they're, uh, most of the, a lot of the bus drivers I'm listening to have very little empathy for the people that are struggling in the society. So you have a real problem here. So reimagining your safety. You don't have your crisis team. You have nothing, okay? And you know, the fact that it's going to take you to 224 to do it means you don't care about it. It's just window dressing. And some of us know that. We know you're lying. You're liars. You're professional liars. Um, thank you. Um, what is it? Set of 
Good morning, everyone. Um, the Reimagining Public Safety Committee met on February 15th, um, pretty much by Zoom, and it was well attended. The meeting now includes a regularly scheduled security update from Director Pat Williams, which is really great. Um, highlighting any recent security-related incidents is on this uh, system. We felt that was important to, you know, give any, answer any questions um, like, but as long as they don't interfere with any ongoing um, uh, court issues. The committee also reviewed the final, we're all excited. Well, you're going to tell us about any of those? No, you're not. It would be useful if you could tell, if you could go over some of these security incidents that you talked about, but you're not going to do it. I did the final draft of the community training RFP. And remember the new types of training, it's for new types of training for line staff and system partners. Based on the feedback, we divided the RFP into three main mini grants. Uh, first one is enhanced community informed DEI training. The second is writer support training. And uh, the third is enhanced writer engagement and support training. And we are really confident that we're going to get uh, many submissions from most of the community-based organizations, um, and even a few from our members at, that sit at our table. Uh, we look pretty much, we figure we'll average about 13 to 18 proposals, ranging anywhere from five to 10,000. We launched the RFP proposal on Friday, February 25th. There will be an info session. Everyone's welcome to attend March 9th on Zoom. You can find that on, our, um, on the uh, website. And then the applications are due um, by 5 o'clock on March 25th. So we are, that is out the door. We are really excited about that. Our meeting also included an overview of security personnel that is on the system, their roles and their responsibilities. And this was um, presented by Justin Dillon, um, the TriMets Manager on Public Safety Operations. We also um, encouraged our members and anyone um, to do a ride-along along with the safety response team or the customer safety supervisor <laughs> so that members of the committee can further have a greater knowledge of the system um, and how the roles of our safety response team and safety supervisors interact with the public. And we felt that this will help them to identify any gaps and offer any solutions as we head into our work um, working on the safety response team, um, which is at our the next safety meeting. safety response March team. And um, also at that meeting, we'll have some updates from our RFPs. That concludes my report. That's lovely. Any Thank questions? you so much. Thank you, Director Lewis. Um, I'm just excited. Uh, to see the progress that is starting to be made in terms of implementing some of the recommendations. So full of shit. You haven't done shit? Stop lying! Does anyone have any questions or comments for Dr. Lewis? Seeing none, then we're going to go to our final report, which is going to be provided to us by Director Way, and it's on uh, an update from the Transit Equity Advisory Committee. Transit Wei. Equity! Um, thank you, President Simmons. Can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, so I will also be reading off of a notes page, so I apologize if I am not directly um, looking at the screen, although everybody looks great this morning, so just wanted to say that. Um, so TAC met on February 8th. Uh, several updates were provided by staff as well as agency announcements. So I'll just bullet point go through the following. Um, many of you know we celebrated Rosa Parks' uh, birthday on February 4th. Um, China did not collect fares that day. Um, and that is Yeah, they did not collect fares. Well, some of them did collect fares, by the way. Because nobody, the drivers have no idea what's going on. There is no actual... <laughs> the, every driver does their own thing out there. It's always been that way. It's not that's not something that's new. It was that way back when I was driving bus. Every bus driver is literally 
the captain of their own ship and, and is able to do the job as they see fit with minimal interference from the company. Usually, it depends on how bad they are. You got to be pretty bad to get in trouble over there. Is, uh, it's been called as Rosa Parks Transit Equity Day. Um, that same day, uh, towards the evening, there was also a Transit Equity Day um, that was organized by Bus Riders Unite with Opal, uh, New First Zodiac. Yeah, I'm very, you know, Opal sold out. I, I guess they got a bunch of money. And so now they're part of the establishment themselves. Uh, Sunrise PDX and other community groups. Um, they gathered up the time at Lost and Found um, and really just called into attention a lot of issues around climate change, <clears throat> um, transit equity, um, and it was led by young people, led by youth. About 50 folks attended that event. Um, I was there and Director Edwards was there as well. Um, so it was just great to um, see some of the young folks really talk about their experiences. Uh, TriMet, as we all know, is also hiring. Um, we uh, have been highlighting the bonuses um, as well as the bonus is not enough. I mean, some of them are offering five thousand dollars, but transit industry just doesn't pay enough. I mean, I've been looking at all the salaries. I mean, you know, we live in a slave society. It's based on slavery. It's, it's no longer chains. But if unless you're part of the elite class, you're struggling against each other to find a livable wage job. And most jobs are not even livable wage. You can get livable wage at TriMet, but you have to wait three years to do it. And that's not what I call progressive. Just really encouraging TIAC members to share the work with the community. Uh, we also shared Portland Street Trust 2022 Oregon Transportation Summit, which is scheduled in April 25th through the 27th. And uh, this is a great opportunity for our TF members to attend, as we have in previous years. I'm also happy to report um, that we have been um, having a great partnership with the Oregon Health Authority. Um, so far, we have provided over 44,000 transit fares for those facing challenges due to um, COVID um, around getting to and from uh, vaccination appointments. Um, this partnership, I think, is, is great. It's very yeah, innovative. Um, and this program is continuing to take requests as well as partners. The great vaccination, which was a complete failure, but you need to be able to think analytically to see that. But keep believing what you want. I mean, you know, the propaganda. Safe and effective. In Massachusetts now, well, I don't know if it's now, but last week, there were more people in the hospital that were vaccinated that were, than unvaccinated. And guess what? The unvaccinated are still not all dead. That includes people like me and Pooty and a few others I know. We're still alive. Yesterday, I was pretty sick. I thought I might have had the COVID, but I woke up fine. So whatever it was, it went away. Pairing up with agencies so that um, their clients, again, um, can get the information that they need um, if they wish to be vaccinated. Um, we also uh, retired... Uh, there's a retired climate para paratransit bus donation to non to nonprofits. Um, so I didn't even know this, but when Lyft vehicles reach the end of their service, um, they are auctioned off and donated to public agencies. Um, so I think it's a you know it's a great way of giving back to the community. Uh, we heard last month um, about uh, just the repurposing of these vehicles to you know even provide um, food in certain neighborhoods. You know, being like a mobile. Uh, food market, which is a great idea. So we uh, wanted to just... What are you talking about? You're talking about Afro Village? That Afro Village thing. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That Afro Village thing. Is... <laughs> Lift up some of these nonprofits like the Black Futures Farm, um, the Urban League, and uh, the Bayou Lakes Hope Center were other organizations who received a vehicle. Um, and then we also launched an online support request form. Um, these are for nonprofit organizations whose mission, vision, and values align with ours. Um, and yeah, see, like this is whole complex of what I, what we call poverty pimps. All these organizations that supposedly serve the poor, but in reality serve themselves. You know, whatever happens, just give the money to the people that need it. They don't do that in this fucked up country. They give the money to these poverty pimp organizations who skim it all off of their salaries. 
they can request um, uh, uh, to be sponsored uh, by TriMet for things that they're working on. Um, and then as Dr. Lewis mentioned, uh, we went into uh, a discussion around reimagining public safety. Uh, the RFP is, is now soliciting proposals. So TF members heard um, that announcement and I'm sure there'll be many folks who are, um, uh, who are wanting to apply. Uh, and, you know, we also went into a conversation around uh, really trying to set the equity. Uh, set. There is no fucking equity, you fucking banana head, okay? They leave the fucking vulnerable people stranded at the side of the road. So stop talking about equity. There is no equity. Just because you say it doesn't mean it actually exists. Listen to your scanner. You want to see equities? Listen to what's going on out there. There's no equity. You're leaving all the most vulnerable people stranded at the side of the road. I'm trying to set an equity lens and an equity and That's safety, bullshit. coupling that together. Um, because it just keeps saying this word over and over and over and over and over, like Goebbels from you know Goebbels from the Hitler regime said, so if you say something often enough, people will believe it. That's what they're doing here. Over and over and over. Equity and inclusion. Equity and inclusion. Equity. And inclusion. There is no equity. There is no inclusion. Look at the tents. Look at the walking dead. Look at the homeless. Look at the people you won't pick up on your system. There's no equity and inclusion. You're lying. You're propagandists and you're elites. And you people really are the enemy of the regular people. So critical. So TF members had an opportunity to review our current uh, working draft business plan. And um, again, one of the areas that they, um, you know, that, that our team, I think, did a really great job was um, really posing, right, safety and equity, um, that this is something that we are going to be. Right. I can't take this shit. I can't watch these. Okay. I just can't do it. Focusing on. Um, in all of the areas of our business plan, not just one area, because it is a critical component. And um, so a question was raised by some TF members, and we went into a, a pretty robust discussion of, well, you know, when we talk about safety, um, right, uh, who defines that, um, how are the different groups with their experiences, um, oh. Oh such as young people, people of color, seniors, oh, immigrants. Shut up already! Uh, just these, these are, these are, um, uh, what's this from our I told you I can't saying, watch this. You know, it's really important to define, right, like, um, just the lenses that oh, different communities so bring when we talk about safety. Up, um, this. so, uh, I, I think the takeaway from this oh. is that there is just going to continue to be, um, more conversations, um, around... Yeah, more useless conversations of bullshit amongst elites like yourself, Kathy. All of you people don't have the slightest clue what's happening on the ground. You're in positions of power that, that actually support the systems of oppression of the rest of us and you talk all the talk and you do nothing to actually change anything. You're kind of like a Bernie Sanders. He, he says all the right things and he's done nothing to actually help. Uh, the Reimagining Safety Project and um, TIAC and how we can better collaborate or partner um, and really, again, trying to provide the best system, the safest system uh, out there um, for right, everyone. Up, yes, and just a couple of other now. Questions, um, shut up, how shut up, shut up. being applied to, to the business plan, how is Can you stop babbling? Um, stop evolved. babbling, you're babbling um, and away. And members, again, continue to reiterate the importance oh, of aligning our strategic God. priorities with writers' expectations of the transit system. Shut up. So, as you can see, this is, we're not going to figure this yeah. um, in one meeting or overnight. Um, so oh, this, no, uh, yeah, you could have a safety response team that actually responds, but no, you, you could have five safety response teams. But you don't, and you're not going to. You you rather have a billion dollars sitting in your investment portfolio. Leads me to conclude to um, just my last um, shout out, which is I was able to meet with um, Director Gardner and um, uh, his team, Martin Gonzalez and Amparo Augusto, um, to really just talk about um, you know setting the vision and setting the goals for TIAC for this upcoming year. Um, so we had a great discussion with the team. Um, they had some ideas, I had some ideas. Um, and where we landed is that we want to do... Holy shit, she's, you know who used, who used to do this? Travis Stovall. He used to just babble and babble and babble and babble. Thank God he went over to the mayor of Gresham. At least I don't have to see him here anymore. 
I guess he was going to go off the board anyway. Thank God he was going to go with Warner. They did nine years on the fucking TriMet, but I was stuck listening to Warner for nine years. And now we have Simmons, which is no better. Sometime in April or May, um, sort of a TIAC retreat to really, you know, try to get the feedback that we need from our members, um, but also outline our goals for this committee yes, for the next can you year, shut up? given all of their feedback and input. So, Goodbye. Um, to be continued, but I'm really excited, um, again, that we just have a great staff. Um, that's oh, my gosh. <laughs> Perfect example of a bureaucrat that has no purpose in anything. Talking about nothing, which will which will create zero change. Supporting this work, we have TF members who are fully engaged in, in our mission, and um, they want to they want to continue having up. these important discussions Please, with us. So up. I will wrap up my report. But Please, thank you for letting me okay. go um, just a tiny bit oh, extra, oh. and happy to take questions. Oh, don't take any questions. Thank you, Please, no questions. And um, are there any questions? Please, no questions. Please, please, please. I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank Director Way uh, oh. for um, um, encouraging me to attend and also letting me know that there was a rally at the um, on uh, February 4th on uh, the Rosa Parks Transit Equity Day. And I think it's important for us to, um, to recognize that oftentimes there are groups and individuals that may be uh, criticizing uh, TriMet and um, have issues and concerns that um, perhaps need to be addressed. And if we don't engage or at least listen to their issues and concerns, um, oftentimes we're going to be left to hear um, second and third hand on what their issues and concerns are. And so it was really an eye opener for me to uh, be there at that event and be able to hear their issues and concerns and um, that uh, were being raised at that time. And so I think it's, like I say, I, I can't express how important it is for us as directors to attend these events. That doesn't mean that we're necessarily supporting their agenda. All it means is that we're there to listen and to learn. And I think that's important. Yeah, shut up. Thank you, Director Edwards. All right, now I think it's time for us to turn to the general manager. All right, I can't take any more of this. No, 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 I guess Ozzy doesn't have any more reports. Come on, Ozzy. I was looking forward to at least having one decent person to listen to, and there's no report, but I don't want to hear. I can't take any more of this right now. I'm sorry. It's just so. I just hate watching this so much. You have no idea. 